my name is Mary Ann Tung, and I'm an electrical engineering student at the U of I. I'm a freshman, and I'm working here at the Center for Plasma Material Interactions. And in this video, I'll be showing you the experimental setup of the CBEC coefficient measuring device. The reason that we study lithium here at CPMI is because lithium is a very promising metal for fusion. At the, C at the CPMI, we have this section called slide, and at the slide facilities, they discovered that there's a thermoelectric effect in lithium that causes a swirling motion. And the swirling motion um, is shown in their video, and they have a video posted on this website as well. So you can see the swirling motion in action in their video. But here at this experiment, we want to quantify the thermoelectric effect. So we are measuring the thermoelectric effect here. So I've been talking about measuring the CBEC coefficient and the thermoelectric effect of a lithium wire. But what exactly is a CBEC coefficient or this thermoelectric effect business? Well, when you have a material that one end is hotter than the other, then a voltage is induced across the material. And this is called the thermoelectric effect. So in this experiment, we are trying to measure the thermoelectric effect of lithium. So we heat one end of the wire, and we leave the other end relatively cool then. And so we measure the voltage across the wire. And this is the case for all conductors or semiconductors. We measure the voltage and the temperature gradient across the lithium wire with these thermocouples. And these thermocouples, well, you probably um, use these a lot in real life because a thermocouple is just anything that measures temperature. And so you probably use them in like digital thermometers. And they actually run on the same principle that our lithium wire does, this thermoelectric effect. This is the experimental setup itself. And so you see here, this is actually the lithium wire, and it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, it's, it's that little thin white strip, and it's connected up there with two clips, and what is really hard to see is there's a little coil that is connected to those clips, and that's what actually helps produce the temperature gradient, because when we run current through that coil, it heats that end of the wire, and it leaves the left end of the wire relatively cool. So then we can produce a voltage across the wire. Since the voltages that we're reading in the wire are very, very small, they're in the microvolt range, we have to take appropriate steps to make sure that we have a good signal to, signal to noise ratio. And so to do that, we first, we start out with a pretty high gradient, six to seven degrees across the wire. And then we also run all of our data to a very good lab jack, which amplifies the signals nicely and then sends them to our computer, where we can actually read the CBEC coefficients. So this is the experimental process. What you see right now is our computer screen, and you see the graph of the temperature between the one end of the wire and the other. And right now, the difference between one end of the wire and the other is less than 0.1 degrees. And that is because there's currently no gradient being applied across it. Um, so if I do apply a gradient though, you can see one end of the temperature goes up. You see there's a spike there. And you can also see in the voltage graph at the bottom, the voltage begins to drop when the gradient is applied as well. And so this is what we're talking about with the whole Seebeck effect, because you can see when we apply the um, temperature gradient, you also get this voltage drop.